Hey, how's it going? I'm Jeff. I'm not Jeff. I'm not Jeff Jr. <laughs> Today we're at Benson Park in Hudson, New Hampshire. We're going to take you around, show you what's here. Maybe you'll learn something. <laughs> Hudson's a fairly large town on the Massachusetts state line with a population of just over 25,000 people. It has a rich history, like most of the towns in New Hampshire, and it also has a number of attractions, such as a couple golf courses, there's some historic buildings, like the oldest lending library in the state, uh, and there's even a quarter mile racetrack. But arguably, one of the most interesting attractions is what is now known as Benson Park. It all started back in the 1920s when John T. Benson purchased 200 acres of land here in Hudson to house the animals that he procured while working for the Hagenbeck Company. Carl Hagenbeck was a German merchant who supplied exotic animals to zoos and circuses all over the world, including the greatest showman, Mr. P.T. Barnum. Benson needed a place to quarantine the animals before shipping them off to his buyers in the United States. So this place was perfect for him, being so close to Boston and all. However, this farm soon turned into a whole lot more as the years went on. As soon as the local residents learned of all the exotic animals right here in their town, they had to come see them for themselves. I mean, how often do you get to see lions, and bears, and monkeys, and all kinds of other exotic species? Benson opened the area to the public and charged a small admission fee. Of course, Hudson residents were free, so that people could interact with the animals. He added more and more animals, as well as other attractions and concessions over the years, turning the farm into a little amusement park. The park operated for a number of years and continued to grow under Benson. Sadly, Benson died in 1943 and the park was sold to the Boston Garden Corporation the following year. It was then closed during World War II and then reopened in 1945. The park operated for a few more years as a successful New England attraction, but business began to slow down and steadily decline in the 1960s. So one of the things that's still here on the property is this attraction here with these little stairs. It's the old woman in a shoe. So you get the little nursery rhyme here that you can read. And you go down this path. And here it is. gratuitous action scene on eating nachos. <laughs> Not the cheese though, because the cheese is gross. It has a chip in it. Oh no. <laughs> this is probably one of the most interesting structures that's left here at Benson Park, or it's the one that I was the most excited to see. It's the old gorilla house. This was the home of Colossus, whose real name was Tony, for just over 20 years. Now, Tony was a 500 pound silverback gorilla and was believed to be the largest gorilla ever held in captivity. Now, Tony was somewhat of a local celebrity in New Hampshire and he even ran in the first in the nation New Hampshire presidential primary as a publicity stunt. He's even featured on special trading cards made specifically for primary candidates. I'm surprised he didn't win though. Um, his platform was simply eat more vegetables. In 1979, Arthur Preventure purchased the park with the intent of bringing it back to life. He worked tirelessly for almost a decade, but it wasn't enough. The park eventually shut down in 1987 after being renamed New England's Playworld Amusement Park and Zoo. I don't know, maybe they couldn't fit all that on the sign, 
I remember coming here when I was a kid and being amazed at all the animals, but the gorilla used to scare the crap out of me though. Unfortunately, the park remained abandoned for more than a decade, and it became the target of vandals. The state of New Hampshire Department of Transportation purchased the land for $4 million for wetland mitigation. After that, the state then sold it to the town of Hudson for a modest price. Now, the town of Hudson's on a mission to transform the old park into a new place where families can create lasting memories. As you've seen, some of the old structures are still here, which they intend to maintain, while at the same time adding a number of recreational areas. There's also a series of nature trails which crisscross the land. There may not be any exotic animals left here at Benson's anymore, but there's still plenty to see and there's still plenty to enjoy. One thing that we didn't know about before coming here to Benson Park was the existence of this 9-11 memorial here. Now this particular memorial was dedicated on September 11th, 2011 to honor the many victims lost to the terrorist attack on that day, including Hudson resident David Cavalson. Now, David was on a business trip for Raytheon, and he was actually a passenger on American Airlines Flight 11, which was deliberately crashed into the North Tower at 8.46 a.m., killing everyone on board and hundreds more inside the building. A piece of steel from the 23rd elevator shaft of Tower 1, which is the North Tower, was given to the town of Hudson to make this memorial. Now volunteers worked around the clock in order to get this memorial ready for its dedication on what was the 10 year anniversary of September 11th in 2011. Even after Hurricane Irene rolled through, they made sure that the memorial would be ready in time. It's a beautiful tribute to the 2,977 people who died on that day. It's a day that we should always remember and never forget. Now, this memorial, as well as others around the country and around the world, will always help us to remember. Thanks for joining us here on another episode of Exit the Norm. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, and ring the bell. Hopefully you learned something. This is the end of the video. Bye. <laughs>